So today we're going to show you how you can work with your accountant in your QuickBooks file using what's called an accountant's copy. So an accountant's copy essentially allows you to divide your QuickBooks file so that both you and your accountant can work in it in the same, at the same time without being on the same computer or even in the same office or network. To create an accounts copy, you'll need to make sure that you've selected single user mode and that you're the only user in the QuickBooks file at the time. Once you're in single user mode, go down, you can go to File, Accountants Copy, and you'll see you have two options, Save File or Send to Accountant. Those two options just determine how the file is sent to your accountant once it's created. Send to Accountant sends the file to a secure file transfer site that Intuit, the makers of QuickBooks, maintains, and then they send an email to your accountant telling them that it's available for them to go and download. However, some accountants already have their own secure file transfer sites that they use to manage all of their relationship with their clients, and they may prefer that you send your QuickBooks files through those file transfer sites as well. So you can also save the file to your desktop or to another location where then you can email it or send it through a different website as your accountant may indicate or instruct you to do. So again, that's probably something you want to have a conversation with your accountant on just to find out what their preference is on how they would like you to send the file. For this example, we'll use the save file feature and we want to do an accounts copy that's already selected so we'll click next and we get to the dividing date the dividing date is really the most important part of creating an accountants copy because that's going to be what determines what you get to work on and what your accountant gets to work on the way it works is when you set a dividing date anything that happens on or before that date the accountant gets to edit, add, delete, change those transactions. Anything that happens after the dividing date, you get to add, edit, change, or delete. So you want to make sure that that dividing date is set such that you have access to all the periods you need to enter transaction in in order to get your job done until the accountant is finished and the accountant also has access to what they need in order to get their job done. So again, this is probably an area where you want to have a conversation with your accountant on to find out what their preference is on what the dividing date should be so that they can access the work that they need. And for this example, we'll go ahead and set a custom date for the dividing date and select 1-1-13. going to prompt me to close all the windows. We'll go ahead and do that. So if you've got anything unsaved, you'll want to make sure you save it before you close all those windows or you'll lose whatever you have unsaved. Here it's going to ask me where it's going to save it. Remember I told it to save the file, not send it to my accountant. So I've got to select a place somewhere on my computer where I want this file saved. I'm going to throw it on the desktop so that I can find it easily afterwards and then I can email it or FTP it up to my, my accountant, whatever they prefer. So we'll save that out to my desktop. And this will take just a second. Uh, it really kind of depends on your file size. It may take a few minutes for this accountant's copy to create. So you just kind of have to be patient with it. Because this is a sample file, it's actually really fast. So it's created the accountant's copy for us with a dividing date of 1 1 2013. And I can click OK. At this point, that accountant's copy is sitting out on my desktop ready to be sent to my accountant. And that's all there really is to creating an accountant's copy. Before I end though, I want to show you how these restrictions work. So let's go ahead and write a check. And since we had a dividing date of 2013, let's go ahead and put something in 2012. So this is history. This is looking backwards. These are the that's in that period where only the accountant should be able to edit things. So let's throw in this check. And I'll hit save. And no surprise, it's going to throw an error on me. And it's going to remind me that I'm restricted from that portion of the QuickBooks file right now because it's being sent to my accountant. And I'm going to have to wait until my accountant gives me the accountant's copy back 
before I'll have access to 2012 and can enter this transaction. So I either need to hold off on this transaction until the accountant's copy comes back, or ask my accountant to enter it for me since he has access to that period. So that's how the restrictions work in there. Um, you can check out our video on bringing on receiving an accountant's copy back or removing restrictions to find out how you can gain access to those prior periods again. Um, as I mentioned before, it's kind of a temporary restriction just to allow your accountant to work in that period until the accountant's copy comes back. But that's how an accountant's copy works. That's how it's created. Again, to find out how it gets returned, check our, our additional videos.